So, this is the setup on the box. Yeah, we are missing a light here, which we will get. Today, I'm gonna run you through like five points to help you stay on track, whether it's in your business, your relationship, just in life, how to break that down into five simple steps, things that I've learned and things I've taken tips from. I mean, I'm getting old now, so I've got some wisdom behind me, I like to think. I'm not young. <laughs> well, I've got this here. I just finished a book called Atomic Habits, so I'm gonna to refer to a few things in there which is gonna help you stay on track. It's helped me change my perspective in getting the job done, to change my environment, to make it as easy as possible for me to get small things that the compound done on a daily basis, right? But this is the next book that I'm on to right now. So I'm only two chapters in, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Uh, so I can't give too much of a lowdown on it, but I am enjoying it so far. I will keep you updated on that. But today we are going to a, another gym. So if you are following my journey, you are one of my nearly 8K subscribers. I've been showing, trying to show a different gym. I think we've got like Fit Code, had Banus, um, we've had Wellfit, probably some more. Anyway, today is Lana Gym and it's actually a PT gym. I went in there the other week to do a shoot and I was like, I want to film in here. It's very, very aesthetic. So I'll tag it when I'm there so you can check it out if you're in Dubai. And by the time you've watched all these videos, you will have a good understanding of what gym is best for you. Hopefully. So we'll go in there and I'll run you through a bit of a uh, push day. I'm going to train my titties today, trying to get some as big as my missus. And also, just trying out my new hats that I've got. So if you do follow me and know me, you know I own formerly called Elevate Agency and um, just changed it to Apex. So we've got the new merch in, as you can see. So I need to try these hats on. But Emma's had this one on before to show you the size of her head. She is small, she's a small human. How tall are you? She's five foot. Tiny. So, best things come in small packages, they say, don't they? Yeah, gotta try these out. The hats are pretty sick, but I'll be sending these out to some of the new clients. If you're an old one and you're watching this and you want one, hit me up. But yeah, check these bad boys out. I'm gonna start the first point, probably in the car or at the gym, how to stay on track. So, let's get to it. Every morning, I don't have an alarm bell, I have this, right? I just wanna show you what we wake up to. So she stands on top of me every morning and starts to like nestle, nestle her head into mine. But this is the view. What's this? She literally just stands on top of you, looking over you, and I wake up to this. <laughs> so on the way to the gym now, um, so the first point out of the five, how to stay on track. Um, I think it's quite an obvious one, but people just don't do it. Um, people like to wing things, half-assed things, but you need to have a long-term vision in place, and that needs to be that needs to stick. That doesn't move. Okay, whatever that is with your physique, maybe it's to get to a certain body fat, to a certain weight, to be a certain look. Make that big, right? You know, don't be scared on that one. Same with your business. If you want to get to X figures per year, per month, whatever it is, um, achieve something, right? Make that a massive goal, write that down, and honestly, manifest the fuck out of that. But what you've got to do once you've written your long-term goal down is literally reverse engineer it and break it down into lots of small goals. Now, these goals need to be realistic, you know, because if your goal in, if we're talking about body fat, is to lose like 20, 30 kilos, right? You can't just jump in at the deep end with an advanced workout. You literally need to break it down, put your trainers on and start doing a few more steps every single day and be in a smaller calorie deficit. Something as small as that. And these things are gonna compound and you're gonna get it wrong. Things are gonna happen which don't work. Life gets in the way. So you've gotta remember, anyone who has done, that you, done something that you wanna do or achieve has failed more times than you can even imagine and that's the most important thing because uh, the biggest threat to success is not actually failure it's boredom people give up but if I told you you know you've got to fail 50 or 100 times and you will get to your goal you'll just be ticking the failures off one by one you know it just become a game of like literally ticking boxes right you've kind of got to have the same persistence with your goals you know but we need to firstly have big goal 
in place and that, that, that doesn't move, right? So write that one down. But you've got to be fluid with your short-term goals. So when it comes to staying on track, because your natural goal that you've written down is a big one, don't get disheartened if it doesn't happen soon because it's not gonna happen soon. And, th and the quicker you realize that, the quicker you're gonna be able to just get and start to enjoy the process. And trust the process as well. If it, if it happens fast, usually it's not gonna last. That's what I like, I like to say. It's a good saying? Yeah. Thanks, Em. It doesn't look great, but it's there on the right there, you can see it. So I'll just have to find the parking space and then we'll go in and check it out. I'm gonna run you through a workout and I'll go through the next steps. <laughs> Workout already here. Yeah, but this is the gym. It's um, it's sick. It's a private gym. There's one PT session going on here, so I think we've got the whole thing to ourselves. Uh, um, yeah, it's aesthetic. So I'm going to run you through a push day workout. <laughs> going to do three movements on my chest. Two on my shoulders, two on my tries. The first movement is one of my favorites for the chest, particularly because I'm always trying to build my upper part of my chest. Use your dumbbell incline press. I'm just gonna run you through how you wanna be doing this and how I find I get the most out of it. So when you're going up, a lot of people, they've got their hands straight. So you actually wanna bring your elbows in a little bit because you're actually gonna focus more on the chest. Because if you're doing this, you're actually gonna be putting a lot on your front delt. You'll feel it as you go up there. So, and if you put your elbows slightly to the side, you can go a little bit deeper, getting a bit bigger stretch on your chest. So push up, keeping like a 45 degrees angle with your fists up, drive. Tempo you wanna be doing about three seconds down. One second up, one second hold. Quality over quantity, guys. Now with your rep ranges, how many reps should you be doing? It really depends on what weight you've got. But you've got to realize the heavier you're going, you're gonna go into strength training and you are gonna be probably sacrificing some form. So for me personally, I'm trying to isolate, build that muscle, tear as many fibers as possible. So I'm gonna get a medium weight, aim for anything from like eight to 12 reps, depending on how much I can get out essentially. What I'd usually do as I go up in weight, my reps are gonna go down and then I'll probably do a drop set on the final one just to totally exhaust that muscle group. Exposure with the new clobber. Um, right, so you're probably wondering, like, what's your rest period? Um, now, if you're doing lighter weights, you're probably going to have it at high intensity, so I'll keep them shorter. But if you're doing big weights, you're probably going to need larger rests. I genuinely like to keep my workouts pretty intense, uh, so I'll probably rest. I rested more than a minute there, but I'll probably keep it to about 60 seconds. Don't throw your weights on the floor, don't be that guy. Exercise number two, we're gonna do some sort of a fly. Now, you can do these with dumbbells on a bench, no problem. But the benefits of using a cable is you're gonna have resistance all the way through to the top. So if you've got dumbbells at the top, there's pretty much no resistance because you're just holding it, right? Until you go back to there, then the resistance is gonna pick up again. So the benefit of this is gonna have resistance all the way through the movement. So it's better for tearing muscle fibers, right? Find a weight which isn't too crazy, probably around 
10 kilos for me. Now, what we're gonna do here, we're gonna be bringing them down. I wanna focus on the middle of the chest. Where you alter these arms is gonna determine where you're gonna be hitting on your chest. So if I were to put these arms down and I'm pushing, bringing up like here, it's gonna focus on the upper chest. And the opposite, if I'm bringing it in, I'm doing here, it's gonna focus on the lower chest. The three parts of the chest, right? So I wanna be hitting the middle right now. And when you do this, don't just focus on bringing your arms in, okay? Because you're not gonna get the full contraction. You wanna be stretching right out, bringing it in, and focus on bringing your elbows together. All right, get your arms straight. Again, with your rep range here, I'd aim it for around eight to 12 again, but quality over quantity again. Like I said, you, you can bang them out like this, but what we're really trying to do is isolate this muscle group. So same tempo, one in, squeeze one second. Again, bring those elbows in, three seconds down. You feel that stretch, my muscle connection. With all of these exercises that I do, I'm doing three sets, but on the final set, I usually do a drop set. So you could technically count it as four, but on the last set, swap. Once you've reached your max, half the weight, and then just go again till failure. Drop set, drop it down. Half the weight. And then, rep out. Final movement, we're actually going to do a superset with these. So I'm going to do a flat bench, which I'm going to go up in weight with. Um, and then I'm going to superset this with a fend press, however you say that. Where you're actually grabbing the dumbbell, you're squeezing in and you're pushing out. So you literally just need a 10 kg dumbbell. You will find that difficult, especially after this as well. So this is just to really exhaust the muscle group. And again, with this, keep your elbows coming down rather than going up into your chest because it's going to hit you upper delts otherwise. So you don't want to get, go too heavy. And hand placement, usually your bars will have like these grips on here, if you can see. I like to put my pinky on either side of those. Bring your elbows down by your side and coming to where your nipples are driving up. Straight into this. So your dumbbell, try not to put your fingers through. Try to squeeze the plate. So it's gonna lock in your chest muscles. If you're, if you're doing that, you're holding it. You actually wanna squeeze in. So go up, out. As you can see, I've got like, what was that, four? <laughs> Five? <laughs> Fucked you up. Okay. 
everyone who's watching this knows how annoying clips are and how often you lose them. Look at that. Oh, that looks really dodgy, doesn't it? Shit, <laughs> I was looking at me and saying, why am I wanking off? Why am I wanking off a, uh, a barbell? <laughs> you want to get your feet seen back like this, arch your back a little bit as well. That's chest done. Let's do two movements on the shoulders now. You will have touched on your shoulders during that movement, especially your front delts. Got it. Such a good boy, in the way. Bro, you don't want to be that guy. Don't want to be that guy. I hate that guy. I used to be that guy. It's just rude. And. Also, you're burning a few more calories. The second muscle group, we're going to hit your shoulders, right? So start with Arnold press. Reason being is because you're going to be hitting more heads of your shoulders as you're bringing them round and up, okay? You're not just going up and down. Get in the mirror, look at your form, because you want to be doing this right. And you won't need as heavy a weight as if you're just pressing. So you want to get into this position, you're going up. You're bringing down and in and up, so it's a very controlled movement. You're not just going up and down like this. So you need to control it in and drive. Simple as peace. So three sets of that, you literally don't need many reps on that. Eight, 10, got 20 kilos here, it's more than enough weight. Nice control. To finish my shoulders with the second exercise, because during the chest workout, I will have been touching on front delts. That Arnold press is done front and side, and the last really is to do my rear delts. I'm gonna focus on rear delt raises on here on an incline. So don't, don't try and be a big man. Get like a nice lightweight, these are eight kilos. Get yourself up here, comfortable. And what, what we're doing, once you've got the weights, you need to bring up here. You're literally just focusing on this muscle. So my muscle connection, we're not doing this, we're going out and bringing it up, okay? So we'll touch on your traps a little bit, but really think what muscle you want to be trying to hit, which is your rear delts. 
So, different hand placements are gonna help you feel that muscle group. I personally like to do this and go out. Some people like to keep it straight hat, armed, but I'm gonna do this. We wanna be hitting, again, it's a lightweight, it's a small muscle. If you wanna target it, you should be doing around eight reps, I reckon. I've even gone lighter with these because this is purely form and I felt like I was bringing up like this to get the weight up so if you're doing the same thing just drop the weight there's no ego left in today come on if you're struggling to control it on the way down it probably means it's too heavy to do this particular movement finish off two exercises on triceps this is probably one of my favorites because you can really manipulate what head you're hitting. So we're gonna start off on rope, cable, tricep extension. So you wanna find where's best for you here. You know, people like to go forward like this, it's fine. People like more upright. For me personally, I need to up the weight a little bit. Slight bend in the knees, in the back, and drive towards, towards like my legs, but pushing out. When you're coming in, make sure you put your arms out. It's really gonna activate the other heads. So with this, you could probably find you do more reps. So I'd put maybe a little bit of a heavy weight on. But again, aiming from 10 to 12 reps, three sets. Same tempo, three seconds down, one second up, one second hold. that one more exercise on triceps so the next one I'm actually gonna do an overhead dumbbell press and the reason why I don't do that first is I get a little bit of tendonitis I think in my elbows so I always find it easier to warm up on this before I go into that because you usually have to lift quite a heavy weight on that as well but yeah done I actually always used to do this sat down on a flat bench get a dumbbell and do this. But after working out with one of my good friends, Mike Thurston, he actually th showed me, I don't know why I didn't think of this before, but leaning back on a bench like this, getting the weight, and you can have a supported extended stretch, which is really gonna lengthen your tricep muscle here, and then you can power up. Because if you're doing it when you sat down like this, you try and go too far back, and it, that's gonna happen, right? So. Get yourself a bench. Get yourself a bench like this, put it on incline. We're actually gonna be standing. So, like this. Make sure you're supported. You wanna be quite far up it so your, the weight doesn't hit the back of the bench. And, see that stretch there? And then power up. That is the nuts. <laughs> that is so good, honestly. You feel the full stretch of the muscle and then full contraction at the top. Yeah, 
Big up, Mikey T. Push day, done. What was that? Three, five, seven exercises, kind of. There's some supersets in there as well, but yeah, that's a push day. Do it right, you'll feel that in the morning. Right, so I've just finished my push workout, which leads me into my second point of how to stay on track towards your goals, whatever it may be, right? The next thing I wanna talk about is disciplines and habits. Right? And I'm sure you've all heard that quote. Discipline is gonna take you where motivation can't because motivation does, unfortunately, come and go. But it's very easy for you to write down your to-do list, like get steps in, do work, do this, that, and the other, right? But will you actually do them? So what you need to do to encourage yourself and make sure you do hit your checklist, taking off little wins every day, is make them as appealing as possible. And that only comes from preparation to each actual, actual individual goal. So if you need to get your 10K steps in per day, make sure you've got your trainers lined up by the door or maybe you've set yourself alarm, whatever it is. Pre-make your coffee on the morning from the night before as well. So you wake up, you've got your gym bag packed, you go over to, into the kitchen, get your coffee, go to the gym. You start the process before getting the actual job done, if that makes sense. So you need to make your environment in a line with your to-do list of what you want. And by doing that, you're gonna be disciplined because you're gonna enjoy it more. You know, no one wants to wake up at like 5 a.m. having to pack your bag in the dark, get your trainers, you can't fucking find them because you're not prepared. So make it easier on yourself to get the job done. Simple as that. And with that, that's gonna create habits, that's gonna create a lifestyle. What's that? <laughs> It looks disgusting, isn't it? It's, it's fucking nice. Hers is that like... One's green. <laughs> that looks really displayed really well. Presentation. This is, looks... <laughs> looks terrible. It tastes amazing. It's turmeric latte. Turmeric latte. Sounds very fun. Right, guys. Just in Tom and Surge now. Gonna get some food. Before I do, let's get on to point number three. How to stay on track. So, I just spoke about before about, you know, having discipline, creating habits and to do this stuff. So when you're doing this, it's very important to track everything. So I mean, you are making this and you are taking wins off, or maybe they're not wins, they're failures. You are tracking this so you know where you can improve, right? So if we're talking about fat loss, you want to be tracking your macros and your calories, right? If you're not tracking your calories, you're going to be chasing your own tail, not knowing what you're putting in your body, and you're probably going to be going up and down throughout the year doing these crazy aggressive diets and then ballooning up because you've gone on a holiday or something, right? But if you want consistency and progress throughout the whole year, you need to be tracking what the fuck you're doing. Whether it's in your business, everyone's hitting their KPIs, whether it's in your body, you're hitting your calories and your macros, or it's in your relationship, how many date nights you go on, right? You've got, to, you've got to track it, because if I know if I miss a date night, I'm going to be in the bad books, right? Oh, oh, she's not like that. I'll be in the bad books in my own head, and that's probably the most important thing about this. When you have a day where you miss something, you have a workout that you miss, or you don't do the job you need to do, you do that once, it's okay. You know, life gets in the way. If you do it twice, it becomes a bad habit. And that goes back to point number two, your discipline, okay? So you need to learn to track things so you know where you need to improve. Simple. So make notes, track everything, and move forward. Speaking of tracking, you're probably wondering how the fuck I'm tracking all of this, right? Well, to be honest, it's not even that much of a bad meal. We've got sweet potato fries, we've got chicken, and then high calorie sauces, yeah. I'll just spy everywhere. <laughs> but, if you want to have nice meals, you've got to justify it. And I highly encourage having a diet plan or something where you have something every single day that is going to 
keep your cravings at bay. Okay, otherwise you're gonna go mad. And that's when people start to yo-yo, because they go on such an aggressive diet, they fucking hate it, and they have some sort of bounce back. And they start a massive binge. Like I said, they're just chasing their own tail. So this meal, for example, on the weekends, I know I've been strict throughout the week, and I allow the weekend for me to have extra calories, okay? So you can only do this, you can only do this if you've worked out your calorie intake. So you can be tighter Monday to Friday, Monday to Saturday, whatever it is. And Saturday, Sunday, you can have 500, 600 more calories per day, which in effect is a whole other meal, right? So, track your calories. This is fucking, this is good. Oh. Right, we're back. I'm a little bit sweaty, it's been for a run. It's been 40 degrees heat mental this leads me to number four who are you surrounding yourself with and so this comes in like two forms you need to surround yourself with the right people so a you want to surround yourself with people who generally want you to do well now this is a bit of a tricky one right because there's people who want you to do well and then there's people who want you to keep you safe so for example my mom god bless her right she wants me to do well right but really she just wants to keep me safe I know when I was growing up, I always got went against the grain. I always got fired from my jobs. I always wanted to do my own thing. But in her mind, it was just jobs. Just get a normal job, get a nine to five job. And this is a classic case of listening to your elders, right? And that's a very vague sentence because they have a different perspective because they got brought up in a different generation, right? So you've got to be careful. The people who are closest to you usually want to keep you safe, right? And then you've got to find people who generally want you to do well. And these are probably going to be people like you can count on one hand who are friends, who know you really well, who know your mission, right? So surround yourself with people who you can rely on on the days that you need them most, right? And you're probably gonna have like one or two people, it's not gonna be many. That's the first one. And then B, surround yourself with competition. People who just fucking drive you. There's nothing healthier than competition in my eyes, you know? Because if you're always winning, you don't know what it feels like to lose. And that's important. It's, it's good to be in second place because you're chasing something. You want to beat the person ahead of you. And this is exactly one of the reasons why I moved to Dubai. It's an absolute life hack to take yourself out of your hometown because instead of being a big fish in a small pond, all of a sudden, I'm a tiny fish in a massive pond. There's so many different levels here. There's people who are doing so much better than me. And to small-minded people, that might seem intimidating, but to me, it's fucking exciting. I want to be a sponge. I want to learn off as many people as possible. So competition is healthy. So surround yourself with people who literally give a shit about you. Get around people who kind of inspire you, who you want to compete with. Turn your idols into your rivals. Level up. Anyway, that's number four. I'm going to get inside, get showered, get changed. I've built up an appetite after that run. And uh, I'll show you what number five is. Right, I am showered, I smell delicious, and I'm uh, ready for dinner. So, this is what we're doing this evening. So, this is the setup. We've got, most importantly, the wine. We've got a load of dough, we've got this lump of cheese, and we've got some truffle salami. So, we're gonna try and attempt to make uh, our own pizza this evening. And you're not having any. We have done this before, uh, it was a success, but we, we made a calzone. So we just fold it over. Really easy option, but we're actually we've only got one of these pe these dough balls tonight. So we're gonna dough try. And it's a dough ball, right? Yeah. Oh, well, technically. And then we're gonna actually make it into a pizza. So give me like 20 minutes, and I'll be I'll be drunk. Uh, now we're gonna try and turn this into a um, beautiful pizza. pizza. Back in a minute. <laughs> it's, it came it's not good. I know. I know. <laughs> Into plan. Oh, come, on. No. come on, babe, work it. It's working. <laughs> He's not too good, bro. We have progress, yes. don't we? Yeah. You can see this. So, what I'm doing is work. It's working, isn't it? It's working. So, now let's put the base on. Yeah. I'll be honest. I'm pretty proud of that. And I did about 5% of it. That is, this, this is, this is Emma. This is you. 
I'm gonna give you that. I have drunk <laughs> the other 95% of the wine though, so I have contributed. Uh, but anyway, I'll put it in the oven and see how it's gonna come out. So, this is the final <laughs> work of art. It's fucking solid. I don't know if you can hear that. Before I tuck into this, <laughs> this is my reward. And this is point number five. When you want to stay on track, reward yourself. Whether it's with your body and you've been dieting loads recently and you want to have a cheat meal, or even have something every day that's going to keep your cravings at bay. Have something to make you feel good so you want to carry on. In business, if you hit a checkpoint, reward yourself. Just do something that's going to make you feel good for once, you know? Because like, if you diet for too long, you're eating chicken, broccoli and rice, there's going to be some sort of negative effect if you don't have something that you like. There is some sort of balance to it. You've got to go gung-ho towards your goals, but if you do hit your checkpoints, like I said at the start, have a long-term vision in place, reverse engineer of where you want to be, and you've got to have short-term goals which got to be realistic. On those, on those short-term goals, reward yourself. With mm. pizza. With, with <laughs> pizza and wine, okay? Anyway, that's the end of this vlog. Hope you've enjoyed it. Like, subscribe. If you've got any questions, hit me up below. No, we're not. Right, let's tuck into this then. This is brilliant. This is brilliant. Hold on, wait. No, I'm still going. Oh, oh, oh. Cool. How's it taste? That poop, I'm gonna have my Over and out.